Hello and good evening, everyone. It's good to be back once again with you all. And welcome to our IVF webinar. And welcome, Dr. Anna Puigvert is with us. So, hello, Dr. Anna. How are you feeling tonight? Hi, thank you. It's good to have you here with us. And I'm very, very happy that uh, you've decided to actually come uh, here and uh, present two topics. Of course, tonight we have the first topic on age, aging male and infertility causes. And uh, I can already tell you that uh, Dr. Anna will be back with us actually next week on Wednesday. Okay, so there are two topics that she's going to present. And as always, I'm your host, Caroline. And I also want to mention that uh, my Abby offenses, as you know, we are a part of European Fertility Society and we come here every single day just to support you, to give you uh, some examples of um, topics, but also uh, amazing topics and of course topics that are definitely useful, uh, but also to support you, to give you that opportunity to ask your own questions and learn a bit more from top fertility experts and of course and uh, dr anna is definitely one of those top fertility experts she's the andrologist at ripro clinic which is located in beautiful barcelona so once again hello to to dr anna and uh, thank you so much for for agreeing to present this topic thank you to you to, to let me stay with you Thank you so much. And of course, as always, just let me remind everyone that we will start with the presentation on our topic tonight. And afterwards, there will be a Q&A session. So go ahead, type the questions in the chat section. You can do it during the presentation as well. And Dr. Anna will simply answer them for you uh, after the presentation. Okay, and I guess it is time to start our presentation, okay? Yes, I don't see it. How can I have it? Yes, right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon. I am from Barcelona and now we are very lonely because not everybody can come here with us. Uh, in Barcelona, we love to have people with us. So I put some of the pictures to remember you, our city. Today we'll talk about aging male and fertility. Uh, and to talk this, we must know what is the beginning of all of this, no? The spermatogenesis is the mechanism in which a sperm is product. It produces it in the testicles and it needs to have three months to become from the uh, stem cell to a mature spermatozoa. And the reproductive capacity to having the spermatozoa is begins at the adolescence. Then we will wait for the hormonal response in adolescents to obtain their fertile capacity to have babies and to fertilize uh, those seeds. That's the, that's the way how it's doing and I think it's important to know how it goes. The testicles is produced, it have inside him a lot, thousand thousand of seminarist tubule that are like this you can have the certain cells that help, help the, the stem cells to mature during two months and a half up to three months and having then the spermatid that will become a spermatozoa in this area, in the epididymus. And here you have a schema how the mature spermatozoa is. And these are the hormones that are produced and help to mature this spermatozoa. In our uh, uh, hypothalamus, we have the FSH hormone that uh, activate the sertoli cells and produce the spermatogenesis that we have seen. Also, we have the testosterone that helps the, 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 the production of the spermatozoa through the spermatogenesis. And here you have the Sagrada Familia that need also a lot, a lot of years to, to, years to finish it. Then, at 14 years old, we have the first sexual response, response with a fertile capacity. It's during the res testosterone response with during the masturbation, how we can see it here, and the testosterone. So we have FSH, Certainly, cells and testosterone that will help to have the mature 
spermatozoa. How we can think that the adolescents are becoming mature to have their own uh, capacity to produce spermatozoa and then to fertilize? They have a growing up testicular size with the Tanner uh, index. They have their first ejaculations. They start to have voluntary erections, no uh, spontaneous erection. They have the response of a, a sexual stimulus during masturbation, and then they will start having the ejection of seminal fluid with a spermatozoa. In, during the, from 20 to 35 years old, we are already in the adult year. There are no more adolescents. And it is the optimal moment to have the best fertile capacity. After 40 years old, the concept of male old age is very important to take care of because we have said before that we must have 20 to 30, 35 years old to have the best spermatozoite. The one who will have the most better capacity to fertilize. But that is true that man maintains her during all his life the fertile capacity because they always produce a spermatozoa. But the truth is that the genetic quality of this sperma is deteriorating, starting from the 40 years old. What is happening then? Then the maximum peak of seminal quality and quantity start going down from 30 to 35 years, then they will have 15% of their fertility going down. At 30 to 40 years old, they will, they will lose 30% of this capacity of fertility. When they will have 50 years old, 50% of them, they will lose this capacity of fertility. Always men produce sperm, but its quality play also a key role. That's not only to have a lot of spermatozoa, but what they are bringing this spermatozoa, what they are transporting this spermatozoa that will be ser uh, chromosomes and genes. Here you have, uh, you can see how is the tubule, the seminarous tubule, where you have a lot, a lot of stem cells that are producing mature spermatids, that they will have the capacity to fertilize. When they are going older and older, they will be still losing all this and this, the, the tubules will be thinner and thinner because they will lose the possibility to have more stem cells. That is what you can see. If you see it before, they have a lot of them and later on, in 40 years old, they are losing all these tubules. They are more white and here and here then 20% of the tubules decrease their spermatic reserve through the disappearance of mature spermatic. But when they will have 50 years old, they will lose 40% of it and more than 60%, more than 50% of them. When they are older than 8 years old, they will only have 10% of this tubule that will have the possibility to produce a spermatozoa. And then you tell us, but how do you know all those things? Not only with the histologic study, we have made a lot of the society of the way, the American Neurological Association, made studies very serious with, for example, with the Uterit population, that are population that came in the United States in this area at the end of the 19th century, 18th, 19th century. People have, who have been living only there, and they, they live and nowadays even in these in these conditions, the same condition of the 19th century. They doesn't practice contraception. Women uh, are very young during their fertility capacity, less than 30 years old. They have a correct sexual function with good exposure to pregnancy. And this is really very important. The exposure to pregnancy is the first reason to have a baby. 
and they studied 8,559 couples. And what they have seen, 30% less of pregnancy in men over 40 years old than in couples who was under 30 years old. So more order, less pregnancy rate. And this is the evolution of men. And this is also the same evolution of the fertile capacity of men. In this situation, they are the best capacity, fertile capacity, and older they are coming, they are still producing spermatozoa in less quantity, but more or less quality. In a study of the mass associated aging male study, sexual aspect also very, uh, they are also very important to have a good pregnancy rate. And they have a decreased exposure to pregnancy because there are more increase of erectile dysfunction, lower intercourse frequency, two per month when men are about 45 to 50 years old and a delayed ejaculation. So even they have less spermatids, less uh, to, uh, similar tubal that will produce more spermatozoa and even their sexual capacity will become worse. When we practice uterine insemination, we can see that you have, when men are more than 30, 35 years old, they have a, a rate of 25% of pregnancy. But when are, they are older than 35 years old, less than 35 years old, the pregnancy rate are going up until 55. That's another study that demonstrates that older men have less pregnancy rate in only intellectual insemination than the one they are younger. They have also an alteration of the uh, seminal fluid. They are losing during the years uh, the volume that of liquid that the prostate produce, eh? about even one milliliter from 45 years old to 50 years old. They have also a, a, a decrease of account of the spermatozoa by 3.3% per year and age, and decrease of motility more or less 1% per year and age at the beginning of the 45 years old, and the spermatology morphology, the aspect, physical aspect of the spermatozoa, 4% per year at the big, when they start having for 50 years old. So we'll have oligosospermia, that it will be poor quantity of spermatozoa, low quantity of spermatozoa, astenosospermia, uh, uh, diminution of the motility of the spermatozoa, and teratosospermia, that will have more head defects, mid pieces defects, and a lot of tail defects that also will explain us the alteration of the motility of this spermatozoa in older men. The men always produce sperm, but equality is still staying, saying, play a key role. Because nowadays we know that over 40 years old, about 55 mutations will pass to the offspring. So we're going up, we grow up genetic alteration also. How we can see we will have more DNA fragmentation index in sperm, anoplidis that will must be studied with the biopsy, testicular biopsy, and this would explain the couple infertility and the no fertilization in IVF. Then we'll have recurring miscarriage associated with miscellaneous chromosome abnormalities. Here you have a normal ADN and here you have a ADN of the spermatozoide uh, fragmented. So no fertilization possibilities. Also hormones will change. Will the men more than 50 year olds will have partial or total testosterone deficit syndrome increase of FSH that will explain as alteration of the production of the quantity of the spermatozoide, also an increase of LH.
that will explain you alteration of the testosterone. And older men will have also associated pathologies like diabetes, hypertension, cardiac pathology, respiratory pathology, uh, eventually urological pathology. They will take more medication, they will have more endocrine disruptors that are very toxic for the fertility possibilities in men. And then in older men, they will have longer exposure time. So exhaustion, toxic factors also. So keep care because and with advanced age, we will have in men, fathers over 45 years old, more risk of schizophrenia, increase until 47% of rage for autism also in 80% uh, of, this, of these kids. So that's very serious and very important to take it in case. Epigenetic alteration associated with age is increasing in newborn with increased with DNA fragmentation alteration, increased in new genetic mutations, and they will have higher correlation sperm DNA fragmentation with the uh, fibroblast growth factor receptor. That it's a gene that can produce another very serious illness. Then we'll have trisomies, repeated abortions, childhood with fibroblastic leukemia that we have seen here behind with this fibroblast growing factor gene, and uh, autism and schizophrenia, as we have told before. Then what we must do? When one person that have more than 45, 50 years old, men that want to have kids, must be visited by an andrologist in a proper clinic uh, center uh, with a medical and clinical history, with a physical examination and risk factor detections. The general screening, you know, we start with a sperm study hormone evaluation on in very important the index of fragmentation of those spermatozoa because they will tell us how the is the possibility to have uh, no fertilization fish study also so very important sometimes we must perform testicular biopsy and genetic transmissible disease as diabetes hypertension or cardiac pathologies, hypercholesterolemia disease. So we must and we can help you having you a good realistic genetic counsel. So you must know exactly what it can happen and what, it, what, what we can do. And it has been a very pleasure to share with you to dedicate you these minutes to the most forgotten infertility, that is the male factor. Thank you, every one of you, and we are here to, I am here to answer all your questions, if I can, for sure. Of course, thank you so much indeed for this wonderful presentation, for many, many details and for explaining all those details as well. And yeah, as you have mentioned at the very end, uh, yeah, these male factors are always something that are not so commonly uh, talked about so I am very happy that we are bringing those topics to you and you are very right Dr. Hannah it's time for our questions so of course if you have any go ahead type those in our Q&A uh, session is starting right now and let's have a look we do have very first question from the patient first one thank you for a wonderful presentation could you explain the dynamics of dna fragmentation if you've seen this improve and if given the right conditions antioxidant support etc if it could improve within a three month sperm regeneration cycle okay that's a very interesting answer, uh, question and i think that the first thing that i must say that the most important thing when you make any kind of treatment when you have uh, a dna fragmentation is to have time. That's really very important because people must understand. That's why I start explaining you how the stem cell of the spermatozoid becomes a spermatozoid 
And we need this time because men produce millions and millions of spermatozoids, but only very few are really very good. And very few will arrive to fertilize. When you, nowadays, all of us are exposed to toxic products, to uh, endocrine and in disruptors that we'll talk next week, I we have said. And then uh, those of them, one of the most several things they produce are these DNA fragmentations that uh, doesn't allow these spermatozoa, even he has uh, movement capacity to fertilize because he lost pieces of proteins. How, how we can uh, change this condition? Antioxidant support is important, but I think that at the same time that it's very important to give antioxidant, we must choose the best antioxidant in front of the clinical history, the, um, the, the dairy habits to eat, uh, how people live, and to take out all the toxins that we can have around us. And that is enough. Um, when you make a treatment with an, one antioxidant support, more or less, the best thing is to have the first three months, then you make a seminal screening, a sperm screening, and you see if you have an improvement. I prefer doing it during six months, because then you can see really if it is the best situation to try a spontaneous uh, uh, fertilization or uh, IVF techniques. So, three months is, is good, but if you can do it during three months, it's better. We also, we, we perform a study here with different hospital, and we um, have seen that more than now nine months using antioxidant, it's not really necessary, because it doesn't change anymore. So, three months, sperm screening, three months more sperm cleaning. If there is no change, I don't think that it's better to continue with it. I hope I answered this question. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the very first question and, of course, for your explanation, thorough explanation as well. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Okay, more questions are coming up. Does male age matter when using IVF to achieve pregnancy? I don't understand. How, what do you want to, to, to say with it? So when IVF, yeah. Yes. If, if it's uh, so male age, yeah, does it, uh, I guess, you know, it does matter, right? When it comes to IVF, so sperm, sperm has to be of good quality either way, right? Yes, so, sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. It must be the best quality. More even when you have IVF to use, and you can achieve it, sure. But uh, my recommendation is always, uh, we must know exactly in front of which situation we'll have. When I have a patient with more than 45, 50 years old, I like him to do this kind of screening, but he really must know exactly what can happen in the future. Even, even when he makes an IVF to achieve an, a pregnancy, sure of it. Understood. Thank you so much for that as well. Okay, and let's have a look at the next question from Giovanni. Thank you very much. I have a question. What do you recommend in a patient with severe teratozoospermia, like 0% of normal morphology? When you have a patient with a severe teratosospermia, like a 0%, even less than 4%, you must make him a very good clinical history. Because surely, surely you will find really the reason of it. One little recommendation, very practice. No abstination days before, before giving the, uh, the, the sperm screening. And why? Because in the epidemiology, there is a high concentration of toxic products that can change the morphology of the spermatozoa. That's one of the things. And another thing that 
you must see if this patient has a varicocele. Varicocele is one of the most important reasons of infertility in men and alters very, very badly the morphology of the spermatozoa. So, if you have 0% of morphology, first, um, um, first of all, no, no abstinence days, and you will see that will go higher. Eh? And again, thank you so much for yet another advice, of course. Um, okay, more questions are here. So do the study findings cited in your presentation apply to all races, ethnicity? Yes. All right, easy, easy answer to that one, of course. Thank you so much for the clarification. Sure. Male, men, male factors are the same. <laughs> They're all the men. <laughs> Of course, no problem at all. Of course, thank you so much. And let's have a look, okay? Um, next question is up. What would you suggest if there is 60% of that sperm cells, what could be the cause of this? And is it still possible to achieve pregnancy naturally? My partner is 37, uh, 36, sorry. Cat uh, is a lady, no? I imagine. Yes, I imagine, yes. What you will see if there is about this uh, Here you must really make, uh, I, I say always the same, uh, medical history, but I suggest you to make a uh, study of infectious uh, of the genital area uh, in the urine and in the sperm. More of them can, um, of the bacteries, can broken the external part of the membrane of the spermatozoa that can explain this. Um, surely he can achieve a pregnancy naturally. And it's the first thing that all of us, all the andrologists, all of the doctors must try. First of all, natural pregnancy. And then if we cannot do it, then we can make technical reproductive uh, techniques as IVF, insemination, etc. Uh, I am sure that if you, your, your andrologist knows what is happening, you will achieve a pregnancy uh, by natural ways. I'm sure. All right. Thank you so much indeed for that uh, encouraging uh, advice here as well, for sure. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm just waiting. At least at the moment, there are not, uh, no other questions. There are some thank yous, of course. Uh, however, let's give it a second. Let's see if we have any more other questions. If not, of course, remember that uh, you can ask those questions now, but also you can simply get in touch with the Repro Clinic team. And I'm sure they will be more than happy to help you out as well as Dr. Anna. Uh, so let's, let's give it a minute. And... Um, yeah, someone is, I think it's someone is typing, so I do yes. have a second to make sure that we have answered all the questions. Okay, yeah, still type, typing, let's give it a second. So. All the questions have been really very interesting, that's good to see. Uh, how patients or persons think about it because sometimes we are too much scientific and with very little recommendations we can achieve pregnancy naturally. Yeah, exactly. That is the main um, problem here. Okay, I think Kat has added one more question. Yes, it is right here. So. Okay, <laughs> smoking is bad, and we all know it. Uh, what is your opinion on ICOS products? What is ICOS products? Uh, this is uh, I. This is like you can um, tobacco. It's it's like uh, heated tobacco, not okay. Smoke. It's, yeah? Yeah, uh, smoking really is bad. Uh, ICOS pro products. Um, I don't have seen any kind of studies that demonstrate directly uh, their impact over fertility uh, or, or for the fertility rate in men or even in spermatogenesis. I think that we need more time 
to have to have more uh, more information about it. Okay, so this is still something that we just need to wait a bit more, more studies to come in. This is still kind of new and there are more and more of those products coming in as well, I guess. So. Yes, and the, the, and the problem that the, 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 it is true that there, there are some papers writing about it, but they are not well uh, statistically been well done. So sometimes they can have uh, bad opinions or they say that it's not happened. Of course, understandable. Thank you so much indeed as well. Okay, next question we do have from Giovanni. Do you recommend PGT in males over 45 with young couple in an IVF? Well, <laughs> um, if instead putting 45, you put more than 50, I will tell you yes. Yes, due of the mutation that we can have. 45 years old is a little bit in the middle. I think that it's very important to know exactly how is the health condition of this man. And then you can recommend it or not. 50 years old, sure. Less, we must see what is happening. If he has a lot of toxic habits, what quality life he has, what quality of spermatozoa, spermatogenesis he has, how is his hormone uh, situation and uh, a historical medi uh, medicine is very important. All right, again, thank you so much for yet another answer. And of course, your question, and let's have a look again. Someone is typing, so let's give it a second. Make sure that we have another question, I believe. Yes, it's a thank you from Giovanni. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you so much indeed. Okay, one more, okay, from cats. And when it comes to sperm count, what is a normal range? Well, uh, there is something very, I, I really love it to, to tell it, that uh, the sperm screening, it's not the same as in other sperm screening because there are range that the World Health Organization uh, says. But normally, you must see globally this the seminal um, analysis or screening. We know that we must need 15 to 20 millions per milliliter, 50% with a very good movement, uh, more or less 15% of normal morphology, 50% of uh, a live spermatosa. But uh, when you have a lot of spermatosa, uh, an example, 70 millions per milliliter, uh, 200 million of totally, and, and you have lower quantity of motility, it doesn't happen nothing, a little lower. Why? Because you have a lot of spermatozoa. Yeah. Then you have, um, if you have uh, less than, uh, you have 45% in this situation of uh, dead sperm, nothing happens. If you have fewer quantity, but very good quality, uh, it, it, it compensates one thing with another thing. So it's really very important to take care. And one, another thing that it's really very important is to have one, uh, more than one sperm screening. Because as I've seen all this afternoon, men produce millions and millions, but they never stopped. The, the seminal tubules are producing one, another one, another one. So we have to know how the normally uh, sperm count this person has. Excellent. Again, thank you so much for clarification to yet another question. And there is a thank you from Kat for you as well, of course. Um, so thank you. And sorry, let's have a look. There are two more questions. Is there a specific antioxidant medication you recommend? Well, that's uh, a question that I always hear even in the um, very important medical congress. And I answer always the same. Not all the medications are good. Not having uh, so many quantity of antioxidant medication are, also, are not good also. But you must choose the kind of medication by the sperm screening 
by the way of life of this patient. So you'll have different things. If some, someone takes, never takes fruits, you must give him uh, C vitamin, D vitamin. If, uh, if, if someone with very high environmental factors or toxic factors will give uh, cutane uh, antioxidant. It depends really what kind of patient and what kind of medical history you have in front of you. Again, thank you so much for that uh, explanation. And now we will have another question, possibly our final question. So it will be the last call. If you have any more questions, go ahead and type those in. And the question is, here in Africa, environmental factors seem to have adverse outcomes on sperm aspiration. What is your advice on ways to improve results? <laughs> That's a terrible question. Not only in, in Africa, all around the world, the world we have very terrible problems with uh, toxic environmental factors. Um, and I will, I will say, and I will say to you next week, what we must do. We must tell to the governments to stop killing the human rights in this question because uh, the men, uh, human men are really now in a very difficult situation to reproduce themselves. We need IVF, 40% of men have some difficulties to have kids. Uh, so really it's, it is very difficult even to know which are those environmental factors that can directly produce sperm alteration. So, uh, the first thing is to know why, how these persons, how these uh, areas, which kind of environmental toxics are to take them out and then try to have again a good quality of uh, reproduction. We know a very interesting experience in Central America that in one uh, banana plantation was using a pesticide that produced uh, uh, abortions. And then we have been studying it and we could detect what, which kind of product was taking it out we uh, reconduce the fertility situation of the little village that was near of this banana plantation. Uh, I hope that I can, I had, I help you with this answer that is really very, very serious. Right, again, thank you so much indeed for definitely an um, interesting question and of course for your advice on that and your um, explanation. And yes, as I mentioned, it looks like that was our final question. So thank you everyone for your definitely interesting questions. And of course, Dr. Anna, for your thorough explanation to all of those. And well, what can I say? There are all the thank yous coming up your way. Thank you so much for a wonderful um, you, sorry for answering uh, my question as well. Thanks very much for a wonderful presentation. Another thank you from all the patients. And well, what can I say? Thank you so much indeed. And yes, as uh, Dr. Anna has mentioned, next week on Wednesday at same time, 7 p.m. UK time, we will be back here. And Dr. Anna will be talking about uh, toxins, as she's mentioned, oxidative stress as well. So. If you haven't signed up yet, just go ahead and do it. Um, this is going to be an interesting session, I'm sure, as well. And uh, Dr. Anna, anything else you would like to add before we finish? Yes. I want to add that I thank you, all of you, all of this patient, to let them help to have kids. Uh, human people, we are losing natural way of attitudes during the life. And one of the most important to continue being here in the world is being human being. So reproduction is really very important. So thank you very much to let you help by me.
We are very, very happy that you decided to, you agreed to, to simply uh, present today. So thank you so much indeed. We are definitely uh, happy to have you on board with uh, the webinars, with uh, all those topics that we have. Thank you so much. And I just want to mention that, as you know, um, my IV offenses, this webinar has been recorded, so you will be able to find it on the site. Uh, it will be available on our YouTube channel as well tomorrow. So you can uh, sign up and, of course, that way you know when the new video is uploaded and again i can only encourage you to to sign up for the next webinar on wednesday but as you know we will be back here tomorrow as well with another um with another urologist and andrologist uh, so i hope you will be able to join us to, this time it will be 8 p.m uk time so well i hope to see you there dr anna thank you so much once again everyone have a lovely evening and well take care bye Bye, goodbye.